Hey everyone, it's Josh, and this video is going to be about my very first wake-up call to get sober, or at least my very first really strong wake-up call that I should quit drinking and get sober as soon as I possibly could. Now, I've talked about my homelessness in other videos, my past homelessness, um, and I've talked about the fact that it was my drinking that led to my homelessness, or at least a big part of what led to me having to live in the streets. Um, but because of all that, I went homeless for a lot of years. And um, I'm going to skip over all of that now, and I'm just going to tell you guys my the first major wake-up call I had. And I will never forget this one. This may not come off as very powerful to you, but it's powerful to me. Okay, so I almost can't tell this without even having tears in my eyes. I was panhandling, moving from town to town like I always do, or I always did. And on this particular day, this particular morning, I was in Albert Lee, Minnesota. I will never forget this. I was in Albert Lee, Minnesota, and I was panhandling across the street from a Perkins restaurant. You had like the main highway, but then you have like the side service road where the restaurants and stuff are actually on. And I was panhandling at a stop sign at the side service road. Problem was, it was only about 7, 7.30 in the morning, so not that many cars rolling by. But, you know, I'm hoping for a miracle because I hadn't slept in like a day or two and was going to try to get some money to get a cheap motel room. A pickup truck rolls by me and a couple guys start saying some slick stuff to me as they drive by. So I talk smack back to them. I forget exactly what they said, but I basically came back at them with fuck you, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? They pull over, and they hop out of their cars, and they, they cop out of their pickup truck, and it's like two guys. And they start talking smack to me, telling me about how if I say another word back to them, they're going to... I mean, I won't go into it all, but they're going to do some really bad stuff to me, right? And I was scared. Frozen scared. And this is a big deal. It's a big deal for a lot of reasons. Number one, if you know how I operated out there, I did not let people push me around. If you wanted to just quick tell me to get a job or F you or whatever and keep driving, that was cool. You can't fight everybody who does that. You'll be fighting all day. But if you had more than that for me, if you had a full sentence or a full paragraph to unload on me, then I was letting you know, hey, if you want to go at it, let's go at it. That's how I operated out there. I put up with absolutely no bullying. I could not stand a dude that thought he could push me around just because I was homeless. So I didn't take that crap at all, no matter how scared I might have been or whatever. But in this situation, I was scared the way a little kid was scared. I was frozen. As they were talking smack to me, when after they hopped into their cars, I didn't say a word back to them. I had no heart to fight. And I knew that if they came up on me and they, and they drove back up to me and they did something, I would have no chance against them. That was the drinking starting to catch up with me. I had been sick for a while. Really fast heartbeats for a while, so a whole lot of things going on for a while. And I was weak, incredibly weak. And I was feeling weak on a daily basis. That feeling, and you know, here's the thing these guys weren't badasses. They weren't very big, and not that size always matters, but. You could tell that they were just a couple of normal guys from around that town. These guys weren't, you know, 
is they weren't badasses. They weren't bruisers. They weren't guys that, in a normal situation, I could have probably taken them both on and won them one against them pretty le pretty easily. But that that messed with me. I did end up getting enough money for a motel room. I, I, if I, I don't remember how, how, how exactly, but I did that. And um, I knew that I was probably staring down the face of death because I, you know, I just didn't do that. Just letting somebody completely punk me like that and no, and especially given that they were the only reason that they were coming at me is because I'm, they knew I was homeless. And for me to let them do that, for me to feel like I have no chance against these dudes, that wasn't normal me. But I had no heart that day. I had no heart to stand up for myself when it was about to get real. And that scared the crap out of me. The alcohol had taken my heart, it had taken my courage. Now, did I take heed to this warning? Yes and no. I still kept drinking. I would get sober two months later, and I would stay sober forever, which is a story for another video. But I did keep drinking for a couple of months after that. But my brain was at least starting to work towards... Dude, I got to clean up. I got to get sober. I, I'm in trouble. Bad. I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. You know, I pride myself on having the courage to face any situation, win or lose. Not that I think I'm the toughest man on earth. I don't. But for me to be scared of a couple of normies from some town, so scared that I'm just frozen, afraid to even say anything back, afraid to fight for myself, I knew I was in a really bad way. But I was right. I had no chance. If those two guys had come back up to me, had driven back up to me, and hopped out on me again and started wailing on me. I would have no chance. Would have, wouldn't have would have stood a chance in hell. And again, these guys weren't bad as they were just normal guys. So that was really my first wake-up call. That I need to get sober. I was drinking close to a case of beer a night. And smoking a pack and a half to two packs of cigarettes a, a, a night as well. And um, that was when my body was beginning to tell me that it wasn't going to put up with me doing that no more. But at the same time, like I said, I hated the wake-up call because I at least got my mind thinking in that frame of, I mean, I always thought, thought I should get sober, but the thing is, is that that was the first time that something had happened to where I started thinking about it a lot more seriously than I was thinking about getting sober before. So that's all I got for you today. That was my first serious wake-up call to help get me sober. It would take another two or three months before I actually got sober. Um, but hey, listen, I'm going to link my Venmo down below. If you got questions for me, I'm linking my email down below too, but I'm linking my Venmo. If you feel inspired by this video or this video helps you in some way or you just um, you feel like I'm making good content, please show your love through my Venmo. Uh, I'm going to link it down below and uh, that's all for today.